Well, hello again, modelers. Welcome back to TrekWorks. Boyd here with you. Well, I want to apologize about the audio in this particular video, guys. I actually uploaded this video and found out that YouTube rejected it because I had some rock music playing in the background while I was working, and I got hit for a copyright thing, so I had to reload this and narrate this one. I've got something different on the bench here, as you can see. This is a 118th scale die-cast model of a 1971 Chevelle. I had one of these cars back in high school, and I've always wanted to have a replica of it. I was at my local hobby shop over the weekend, and I saw that they had these 18th scale die-cast cars on sale for half price off. So I thought, what the heck, I'll take this one and I'll take it home and see if I can disassemble it and paint it to look like my car. As you can see in this shot here, this car is all black. It's a black body with a black vinyl top and a black interior. My car actually was originally a burnt orange metallic with a white vinyl top and a tan interior. So in order to paint that, I was going to have to take this entire thing apart. It was actually very easy to do. I flipped the body over and found that there were three connecting screws on the bottom side. Once I removed those, I was able to drop the entire chassis out and then take the interior out. And since they didn't use any glue on this entire thing, I was able to remove everything, including the trim, the interior, all the parts, and not have any problems at all. Here you can see all the parts in the box. Now what was cool about this one is that it actually had a vinyl top on it, which was separate, uh, molded in plastic here. So I'll be able to paint that all nice all by itself. And there's the interior part, which I'm going to paint in tan. Now the plan will be, the paint on this body was actually very rough. It uh, had a lot of texture on it, and it had some runs on it, so out of the box it wasn't a very good paint job anyway. So we're going to sand that all down with some 600 grit sandpaper and repaint that and put a lot nicer paint job on it. Now here again at the vinyl top, you can see it actually has that texture on there to look like real vinyl. And interestingly, that part was all molded in clear, and they simply painted that black along with the chrome trim there around the window edges. So we're going to mask all that off and save that, and then just paint the vinyl part of it white. And so here you can see the interior bucket. We're going to paint that in tan, as I mentioned. And on the engine, you can see that it didn't have a lot of detail on it. The spark plug wires were orange, like the uh, engine block. So I repainted those black, and then I painted the exhaust manifolds. I didn't go too crazy on it, but I just spruced it up a little bit to look a little bit better. You can see all the rest of the parts there. Again, talking about the body, again, we're going to sand this down with some 600 grit paper, and then reprime it and repaint it to make it look a lot nicer than it did out of the box and match the color of my original car. So here in this shot, you can see I've sanded it all down, and you can see how rough the paint actually was on this now in this shot once it's been sanded. It was very poor, and so we're going to clean all that up and make it look a lot better. And the plan will be to wet sand this with some 600 grit, like I said. In this next shot here, we're going to take it over to the spray booth area and get it all primed. I wound up using some adhesion promoter on this first to make sure our paint would stick on it very well. In this shot here, it's had about three coats of primer applied onto it. I used some of the Duplicolor Perfect Match Primer. You can see that that sprays on there really smooth. Now, I sprayed three coats on this, and each time it dried, I wet sanded it in between with some fine paper, some 600 grit sandpaper, wet sanding it, of course. And so we got everything smoothed out really nice on this. You can see I've got the hood and the deck lid open and the door, so we made sure we got paint in all the areas. And so this is all nice and ready to be sprayed. I used what they call a tack rag on this, which is a little rag that's uh, got wax embedded into it so it'll remove all the dust and lint. And here we have it ready to go and ready to start spraying. Now I mixed up my paint. This is sort of a burnt orange metallic like I mentioned. It's a really pretty color. And I'm spraying this down at low pressure guys. I'm spraying at 35 PSI using my little detail spray gun that you see in the shot there. And I applied several coats on this letting them dry in between. We're putting a nice light coat on that. You can see I'm taking my time working my way around really nice and smooth making sure we get it all covered good. But the trick to painting these guys is not to paint them on, not to apply your paint too heavily and get runs or get your paint too thick where it takes too long for it to dry. Putting a nice light coat on it like that lets it dry fairly fast. I was able to repaint probably after 20 minutes of drying time between each coat. And on my second coat, I actually sprayed three coats on this. On my second coat, I wet sanded it again with some 1500 grit sandpaper and got that all smoothed out really nice and then we came back and applied a final coat which we'll show in the shot after this. Here you can see that I'm just dusting it down making sure I'm getting it all covered nice and evenly and the trick to a nice paint job is making sure when you've got your paint applied on there that it looks really nice and wet. If your paint looks dry when it's already on the model it's not going to settle down and uh, smooth out. If you, if you uh, apply your paint really nice and wet it gives the paint a chance to settle before it dries and then you don't have that orange peel texture on your surface. 
in a second here I'm going to zoom in on the model and get a little closer shot of it so that you can see that we've got a nice smooth surface on this and it looks nice and wet and nice and glossy it's still a little bit transparent at this point you can still see some of the primer here and there on it because again this was only our first coat in this shot here I'm coming back this is the final coat this is the third coat I've put on the model and I'm going to be dusting this down again. Again, I went over it with my tack rag and made sure there wasn't any dirt or debris on it. And so now we're spraying it down again. One more coat. And you can see the paint's actually gotten a little bit darker too in this shot because we've finally gotten it covered up and we're not showing any primer through it anymore. And we're just working our way around it, making sure we cover it all really nice. Now something that I'll point out too, on a car especially, you want the hood and the trunk to look really good. So when you finish spraying, you always, you always want to end up spraying on the sides you don't want to stop spraying when you're on the top because you leave a little bit of overspray and that gets a little bit of texture in it and it will wind up looking kind of rough so you can see in the shot here I'm going to work my way around and we're going to finish when I spray across the side of the model and not on the top then we're going to zoom in on it again for another up close view of it you can see how nice and glossy it looks coming out really nice and in the next shot here we're going to come back and we're going to show putting our top coat on which is our clear coat I decided to use this Duplicolor perfect match clear I had never used it before but I really liked how it worked it dried really nice and glossy and it sprayed on very nice and smooth didn't react with the paint at all and I'm going to do the same thing you can see I'm just working my way around making sure I get a nice wet coat on this paying extra attention to the hood and the trunk to make sure we've got a nice smooth surface on that that's the main part of the car that you see and when the light reflects on it especially a model when you're always looking at it from above that's the part that you're going to notice if there's any flaws in it and you can see how nice the uh, metallic is starting to show in this shot here when the light hits it your clear coat really brings all that out gives it that deep look you can see I'm just going over it making sure I cover everything really well and I'm going to finish by spraying on the sides and not on the top. You can see in this shot I'm paying extra attention to the hood and the trunk. Okay, and one more zoom in on it to see how nice and clear and beautiful that looks. Nice and smooth and glossy. okay so we're back on the bench now and you can see that I've got most of the assembly put back together I've painted the vinyl top I've got that reattached I've started putting some of the trim back on here's the interior you can see I've done in the original buckskin color it turned out really nice I've got that all installed back onto the chassis and I'm getting ready to lower the body back down onto that you can see that I've laid down this nice lint free towel here which is really soft this paint was dry but even though it's dry it's still very easily damaged and chipped so we want to be really careful when we're handling it and everything I'm just slowly working my way back down and getting the body mounted back down I'm actually gonna flip the car over so I can get everything lined up and put the attaching screws back into the chassis and get that reattached to the body just sort of double checking everything to make sure everything's lining up properly and the first screw that goes in is actually goes towards the front and it actually goes right through the engine and through the chassis and up into the lower part of the body to hold the front part of the model in place and then we've got two more screws at the rear behind the rear axle at the rear corner on each side that hold the rear part in place and as I screw those down I'm just kinda checking things to make sure everything's lining up properly and so after we finish putting this screw in we're going to flip the car back over I'm checking the front suspension there to make sure that's all working properly 
Then we're going to flip the car back over and make sure everything's working. The trunk, the doors, everything opening and closing. Also, the steering column actually snaps into the bottom side of the dash once you put the body back in place. So I'm doing that in this shot right here. And checking to make sure the interior panels and things are matching up and lining up perfectly. The one at the rear by the driver's side had a little trouble snapping back in place. But we got that. Took a little bit of messing around with it, but I eventually got it. It was just being kind of stubborn. Okay, so we're closing the trunk and the doors, making sure everything's lining up nicely. And you can see in the shot here, it's all in one piece now, and it looks really, really nice. We're going to turn it around and show you the front side of it here. And I, at this point right here in the video, guys, it really kind of struck me how cool it was to see my original car again. I hadn't seen it in over 30-something years especially the front shot there with the grill in place and everything and it really brought, brought back some fond memories I had I had the car for about seven years and uh, really enjoyed it put a lot of miles on it had a lot of fun it was still running perfectly when I sold it too so I kinda wonder once in a while if it's still out there somewhere hopefully somebody's got it all fixed up and enjoying it like I did you can see that I'm putting the exhaust back in place the exhaust actually covers up the screw holes that are on the bottom side of the car now we're rolling it back up on its wheels again and just checking everything once more. Here we're going to reinstall the rear bumper, which is just two pegs that basically press fit back into place. In this shot here you can really start seeing the beautiful paint on the model too. How it'll look sort of red in one shot and look sort of orange in another. That's exactly what my original car used to look like. I used to get a lot of compliments on the color combination back then with that white top. Again, nowadays, guys, vinyl tops are out, but back in that day in the early 1980s, vinyl tops were the thing, and uh, it was really a nice combination back in the day. It really offset the color on the bottom. It just looked really sharp. And here I'm going to be showing the uh, engine itself. It's kind of dark and kind of hard to see, but the detail that I did made it a little nicer. I actually painted some of the silver stuff inside, too, like the engine or the uh, brake master cylinder and a couple other things in there to give it a little bit more detail but I really like the detail on these 18th scale die cast cars especially the grill there it looks almost real and I really really was impressed with it at this point I was really happy and just glad I decided to do this little project so what I'm going to be doing next now is I'm going to be painting on the silver details that we painted over when we painted the model we've got the little hood pins there at the front I'm going to be painting those on next. What I did here is I grabbed a nice small brush and I just used some regular tester silver enamel, which I think looks really nice. It's about as close to chrome as you can get with a silver enamel paint. And I picked out a nice small brush. And one thing that's important here, guys, when you're painting small stuff, you'll notice that when I got ready to paint this, that I kept both of my hands together and I braced them on my bench there so I could hold my hand nice and steady. That's really important when you're painting something really small like that so your hands don't shake or wobble and I was able to pa uh, paint those on there really nice and clean didn't have any trouble with it they came out nice then we're gonna go on the side here on the passenger side door and paint the door handle and the key lock using the same technique holding my hands nice and steady there that one came out nice as well. Now we're going to swing around and do the driver's side door.
still fiddling around with that little interior part, which I wound up fixing later. It just was being stubborn in that shot. Okay, doing the driver's side door now. Same thing, holding my hands nice and steady and just taking my time painting it on. Not trying to do too much at once. And then the little key lock assembly down below it. Just a quick dab of paint and that was done. Now we've got to take it to the rear and do this little key lock on the deck lid area. And I realized that that brush that I was using was too big to do that. It would have made up too big of a spot, so I switched that out to a smaller fine tip brush. We just needed to make one little tiny dot of silver on there, and we didn't want to overdo it or miss the mark, so we wanted to make sure we did it with the right kind of a brush. And just a quick dab of paint, and there it is. Now what I'm talking about here is that th this actual car had some chrome trim around the wheel well openings and I didn't want to try to brush that on by hand because I knew I would have a hard time doing that and holding that steady and not making the line all jagged looking. So the plan was is that I would come back later after the paint was totally dry and mask that off and airbrush those on and I actually did that later and it came out really nice. My car actually had the chrome trim around the wheels so it didn't look quite right until I did that. Once I did that it came out exactly like it. I was really happy with it. And here you can see we're showing you the model pretty much finished up here for the first time. And I'm really happy with this whole project. I was kind of wondering if it was going to work or not, but it, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. You can see we did the nice trim up on the vinyl top there, and it all turned out really nice. And the color looks really glossy and really pretty. And again, you can see it sort of changes colors as you turn it in the different light. It looks sort of red or then it looks orange, just like the original color did. And it was just a great combination turned out really nice and I really enjoyed it and it was just really cool to see my old car again. I had a lot of fun on this project and it just goes to show you a little bit of time and patience. You can do this yourself on one of these old die cast cars and paint it just like you want. And here's a classic picture of my old Chevelle back from 1980 and you can see it looks just like it. it had the Krager SS wheels on it and it was a lot of fun. I sure do miss it. Thanks for watching everybody and happy modeling everyone.